All right. Welcome to Heaven on Earth. My name is Kate. This is Salita, and this is Midnight. And Sweetness is behind the camera. You can see him right here. <laughs> Big donkey face. And we are going to do a meditation to start. And then we're going to do a little wisdom sharing. So as you can tell, uh, Salita is fully laid out on the ground now. Um, taking a little nap. So you may hear a little bit of background noise, sometimes with wind. It looks like someone is lawn mowing right now. Uh, so just allow it to be part of the kind of farm and the ranch experience. You may even hear before when we started, there were some frogs um, that we could hear, the birds. It's pretty awesome uh, to have all the sounds. So the theme for today, last week it was pleasure, today what came in is a theme around grief and how we can process and heal and clear grief a little bit more easily. And so we're going to do some of that today, um, but the meditation is really to anchor more of the heaven on earth experience. And so uh, just briefly when I got here, Winter, who hopefully he will join again, huge horse, came and he just put his nose right to my head and basically um, just breathed in so much here and I immediately felt better. It was, it was just the fastest shift. I felt so peaceful. And so that is really what the equines offer us is a very quick shift into an energy of peace. So that's the intentions of the meditation. Thanks for joining us, buddy. So this is Sweetness. He is a mini donkey. He is reminding us to breathe. So feel free to keep your eyes open or close, whatever feels right to you. Um, but Sweetness's energy is often around helping people get grounded. So as you kind of can see him, start to wiggle your toes inside of your shoes on the ground. And just start to connect with the earth a little bit more. <sighs> start to feel down into your connection with the earth. Allowing the lower half of your body to just start to feel heavier and more grounded. And as you start to feel more connected with the earth, see if you can feel the connection to these horses, to these equines, to sweetness, to midnight. Allowing yourself to feel into what they offer and who they are. And take a moment and start to feel yourself energetically connected to horses and having 360 degrees of horses around you, standing in a circle around you. In front, behind, on either side. Because that's actually how they are right here at this ranch. Is they're actually all around. So be in the middle of a circle of horses. Feeling into Being is equal to them possible. Feeling into
your size being just as big, your mouth being just as big, your heart being just as big. Picture yourself as grounded on the earth as a four-legged creature. Taking a deep, deep breath and letting it go. Breathing out love. Breathing in peace. Breathing out love. And it may even help if you start to Put your hand almost like it is right on top of a mini donkey or a mini horse and feeling that somatic connection. See the fur, to their love. Sweetness so moved his body right to me touching his heart. So take a moment and place your hand on your heart. And to keep your hand on the heart of a horse. And allowing this to just create an opening and some movement in your heart space. See if for a moment you can Picture a ball of pink light growing in your heart and extending that light out through the rest of your body to every cell of your being. Allowing the light to wash over you. Now allowing that pink light to extend out to that energetic circle of horses around you. Extend out to your apartment. And then extending out into your community. And extending out into the world. Seeing that pink light just flooding all pockets of the planet. Allowing it to travel with the unconditional love of the horses, the unconditional love that you are in your true nature. And also allowing that pink light to come down through your legs, down into your feet and out into the earth. Seeing that ripple throughout the earth. Seeing the earth, the energy of compassion and unconditional love. So breathing in, breathing out. And inviting in the question, 
to your intuition, to your higher self. What would more sweetness look like in my life? What would more softness look like in my life? What would more compassion look like in my life? So allowing yourself to just receive an answer. Now sending that pink light to any area of your body that might feel tense still or that feels disconnected in any way, just allowing that pink light to just wash that place, cleanse that place, restoring it back to pristine. Back to serenity. So taking another deep breath, <sighs> letting it go, maybe with a sigh. <sighs> Starting to wiggle your toes inside of your shoes again. Staying grateful for the horses that were with you in the circle, for the pink light, for yourself for showing up today. Just being with you. Just your own energy, your own nature. Letting anything in anyone else's energy that could be around you just drop away. Oh, and clear out. So start to come back into your body. Maybe wiggling your fingers and your toes, touching a part of your leg, bringing in and keeping that passion, that compassion and that peace. And so midnight was just really holding space for us during that meditation, standing very still the whole time. And now he's leaving. So he was really providing the container and I heard something really neat yesterday. I know this is not our topic, but I'll just share it. In that the masculine really does provide the container for the feminine to express and to feel safe. And midnight was very much, is very much the masculine energy in this herd. And he really was holding the space for us. And as soon as we finished, he moved on, he's blowing out. So whatever he was contributing, just from behind was really that backbone of support for all of us and to allow ourselves to drop in to the feminine more 
And it was interesting because Rain, the lead mayor, chose to join him at one point. You probably saw her butt, <laughs> but they were standing right next to each other and they're very good friends. And so I just find that really neat that we created some alignment between the masculine and the feminine in that meditation. And, um, and that she came over during that time as well to really show that. So I am going to move into the wisdom sharing, even though that was a piece of it. I'm going to move my chair here because the horses are all now by another area. So thanks for your patience. See them. Audio is still good. I know there's some um, challenges with the audio for a couple reasons, I think. Um, so if you do have major issues hearing me, please just comment in the chat and I'll know. So for the wisdom sharing, what came in, I always ask, what is it that needs to be shared right now? And, you know, last week I was reading a book, uh, or still I'm reading a book on pleasure and that is really what needed to be shared and in the middle of the night I woke up and I heard the word grief <laughs> I'm like great how many people really want to have a conversation about grief right at this moment um, but then I realized that's exactly what we need to do is continue to have conversations and sharings about things that can be um, things we maybe don't really want to talk about and so Sweetness is here to help with this. And <laughs> clearly you got the big ears right here. Let's just send you guys all some love right now. Um, so part of what we're gonna do to finish uh, the wisdom chair is a grief clearing. Because right now um, we are all experiencing loss on some level. And you can literally say, you know, I lost and fill in the blank even if it's just been temporary. And I'm gonna pause because it looks like, okay, inter internet connection's coming back. Um, but there really is, let me see if you can see more sweetness here. There really is an opportunity, I think, right now for us to understand that grief is definitely part of life, the way joy is part of life and there's really um if we judge grief and loss as something bad or horrible or something to avoid then our systems naturally will feel stressed based on that belief system and we're compounding the grief um, that we might naturally be feeling rather than allowing grief to be an expression that moves through us if and when we feel it so in the past week, I had a, I saw a couple of girls come visit their grandma and they were young with their mom and they held out art for her and they brought her a, a box of flowers and it was just so beautiful and she was, you know, wearing a mask and I just really wanted, you know, my story was I wish they could all sit down and have tea together and hug and all that and then realize that and I, you know, because of my thoughts about it, oh gosh, how sad and how I wish this could be different. I felt a lot of grief. Now for me, when I at surfaces, I sit down and I will just cry because that is, I do not want to hold on to stuff in my heart because it constricts my heart. And the more it constricts over time, the more it can close. And if it closes, then I'm not fully expressing all of who I am, especially my divine nature, which is very much connected to my heart. So I realized, you know, A, that was the right choice to sit and be with the grief. And it wasn't just about them, obviously. I don't even know them. There was a piece of it about me not having grandparents ever as a child and never having that experience and feeling somewhat alone because of that and feeling for this grandmother being alone, even though she had a dog. And <laughs> I realized that what this is is that if we create a story around something shouldn't be happening or it should be different 
or, oh, this is so bad, we compound the grief. And so much of grief is grief. It, it is just an expression like joy, like all of a sudden I feel really happy or really peaceful and it can move through us. It's an energetic. But what is important is that we don't create a story around it. And another quick example of this is after my horse died, it will be three years tomorrow. Um, I was standing in front of uh, the bridge and I just heard the word, I'm never going to have, I, I was thinking, I'm never going to have a horse again. And I was going into this poor me story until I realized that I had a, I had that voice. And then I quickly, thankfully had another voice of intuition and support and higher self, which said, you realize that's just a thought, right? And that's exactly what it said. And I went, that is just a thought. Why am I buying into this thought that... I'm never going to have a horse again because that's adding more grief to something that is already a natural expression of grief, which is losing an animal. And I went, okay, I don't need to think this. So I immediately got clear that part of my mental mastery would be to not compound things to make them worse and layers that don't need to be there. Right, so that was just a story. And the reality is I could have had another horse the next day if I really wanted to. There's plenty of horses that need homes. It's just that I've chosen not to. And so I think that it's really critical that we allow grief to run its course and its energy and that we do not add to it if possible, if we can especially catch ourselves in that moment. So I'll tell you from the horse's perspective, they wanted to share about grief as you can connect in with them. Um, part of the reason sweetness left is because there's a little bit of like a lot of talking that isn't really their life. It isn't, <laughs> they don't process through here really at all. Um, so they're off doing their own things because he's like, oh, Kate's more focused here than with me which is true, and um, that this is more of a mental exchange, so to speak, right? But what the horses will say about grief is that they do mourn when one of their beloved, one of their herd members, one of their children or partners, oh, we just had a pigeon fly off here um, right in this moment. They do mourn. And they also let it pass through them. And they know very much that their life is often predicted, controlled, you know, um, planned by the humans in their life. So there were two horses that were living here and their human just decided one day she wanted to move them somewhere else. And I could tell one of the horses was really sad to leave. What's interesting is the other horse, when it first got here, was really sad to be here because he left his partner that he had had, his, his horse partner, a mare that he had had for many years, and he was really sad to be here. And so they definitely feel grief, and they also do not hold on to it with stories. This shouldn't have happened. It could have been done differently. What could I have done? To, you know, so many people who've had to put animals down did I make the decision too soon? Did I make the right, all of that? So I share all of this with just the awareness around allowing grief to be a passing process and seeing what's possible from there. So I'm gonna stop the recording now.